It's not that long ago, DJI updated their latest, most popular cell phone gimbal. And I've had my hands on it ever since it was first released. And so, in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you my tips and tricks that I learned after owning this amazing cell phone gimbal in the market. So if you too recently picked one up, I highly encourage you to continue watching this video because trust me, you won't be disappointed. You're very likely to learn some new stuff here and there. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So just for a quick summary, in comparison against the previous generation, the Osmo Mobile 3, the main difference is basically this. It has newer improved mortars, which means it could handle a larger payload. Measurements of that payload is right there on the display. There's new zoom feature which i'm going to go ahead and cover in a bit and no longer has a clip now dji gave us two attachment options one is a permanent solution and the other one is a slim very minimum also magnetic attachment you could place on your cell phone so the proper way to mount the clip attachment before you put it on your phone make sure you take a look at the camera icon this is pointing towards the direction that the camera should be facing when you mount it on the gimbal so try to center it as much as possible. If you're unsure exactly where is the sweet spot for the center point, if you actually launch the Mimo app, a cool tip is if you tap the little dot icon down here, click on gimbal, scroll down, and right here where you see horizontal gimbal adjustment, tap on here and it will show you the line where you should place that little clamp to make sure it's well balanced. Now if you're using an Android phone like I am, Try not to hit the volume rocker, so try to leave it at the very edge. It'll work, trust me. And in this Horizon gimbal adjustment, in case you are using a much larger phone, you can also pivot the position to angle it properly if you have to manually adjust it. Now for the permit solution with this flat ring mount, the quick installation guide is basically this. If you're using a glass body phone like I am, use the cleaning solution that DJI provided. Number one, it's a wet cloth. Clear everything out. Make sure there's no dirt or debris that will prevent the adhesive from sticking on. Apply number two, which is just a dry cloth to make sure there's no liquid left over to dry things up. Then grab the clear template, remove the little plastic bit to allow the adhesive to easily stay on the phone and just line things up. Depending on the phone, I like to use little logos here and there to make sure everything is properly placed in the center. Apply a bit of pressure. Once you have it center point and everything, use this clear 3M adhesive sticker and just place it on the device like so. Try to line it up. Now take the magnetic ring, get it ready by peeling off the little plastic in the back and line it up from the top point of this template. And once everything lines up into play, Apply loud pressure when you're sure it's in the right position. Lift off the little ring above here like so. And then the little plastic template will just slide through and you're basically done. Try not to move it for a full day for the adhesive to fully settle. But in the next day or so, it should be permanently stuck on the phone. Only way to remove it is by using a credit card or something like that. And that's basically it. But no matter which mount you choose, Mounting it onto the gimbal is exactly the same. Just make sure this little dot matches the grooving when you mount it on the gimbal like so. And pro tip, the magnet on these things, no matter which clip you're using, it's really powerful. You can basically stick it on any metal surface like a refrigerator or something. And with that ring attachment on the flat one, you can also use it as a kickstand if you extend the ring like so. All right, to make sure we're all on the same page, let me just go over to what each different shortcut does on this thing. So when the gimbal is powered off, if you tap on it, the LED lights will indicate your battery life percentage. And to power on the gimbal, tap once, tap and hold until you hear a beep, and the gimbal will automatically power on like so. Now the joystick will control the movement of the gimbal itself, the pivoting position, and will stay wherever angle you leave it on. Now, in case you're experiencing any Wi-Fi issues like this right now, this usually occurs when you have multiple devices, multiple phones, and instead of going through your Bluetooth settings to make the gimbal communicate with the cell phone, if you simply tap and hold the M, the shutter button, and the trigger, hold it for one second, it will automatically put the gimbal in pair mode. When this happens, you could literally just tap 
connect and it'll instantly connect like so. Now the mode button right here, if you tap twice, will quickly switch from landscape mode to portrait mode. Now the shutter button, when you tap once, will take a picture or shoot a video. And if you have it on photo mode, if you tap and hold it, it will do a photo burst. If you tap the mode button once, it'll quickly switch from video to photo mode. Now on the side of this little rocker, this is just basically the zoom function. That's basically what this side button does. In the back, you have the trigger button. If you hold it, this will enter lock mode. The gimbal will lock onto that position and just flow smoothly. Release it to exit. And then if you quickly just tap on it, if there's a subject in the frame, it will immediately start tracking and simply tap again to exit active track 3.0. Then a double press will recenter the gimbal. And a triple tap will switch cameras from the front to the back. Press and press and hold will switch it to sport mode for a faster respawning gimbal. Perfect for those fast high intense motions like when sprinting and such. And then just simply release to exit it. There's a USB-C port right here. This is used to charge the gimbal. And then right over here, this USB is used to charge the phone. Now before we talk more about the application, yes, the native camera app works, but it's different depending on the phone. So if you're trying to record something on the go, as long as the gimbal is turned on and it's paired to Bluetooth with your phone, here are the shortcuts that you need to know. For iOS, the shutter button will actually take a picture. Holding the shutter will automatically record and will stop recording in photo mode once you release. Double tapping the mode button will actually ro still rotate from landscape mode to portrait mode and of course the joystick will still move the gimbal around. The trigger buttons also do the same thing as we previously shown so by holding will lock the position it just won't do the active track. As for most Android OS phones like my Pixel phone you do unfortunately lose the ability to tap the shutter button to record unfortunately but the back trigger button can still be used to recenter or follow, as well as enable sport mode with the native app. So to record, you still have to tap on the display, but joystick control and all the rest still works. Now the new tricks that DJI added for the Ohm 4 that's found on the on the Mimo app. Let's go ahead and start off with the first one, and that is story modes. Now story modes are pre-made templates that you can select depending on the style you want. These are great when you're trying to record something, make it look professional to upload quickly on a social media platform. So if we select this, the app will fully walk you through pretty much all the shots that you need to shoot to get these uh, epic looking cinematic effects. With the ending result, giving you this nice looking edited clip that you could upload on social media. And then down below that is the pano mode and there's a new mode that they added which is clone me this is exclusively only available on the latest mimo 4 and we'll walk you through pretty much the entire process to get this cool result now other pano modes are still here so you have the choice between this a 3x3 a 240 and for the best result it's recommended to use the little tripod attachment to keep the camera super stable Moving along to photos, there actually is a new glamour effect that you could decide to leave on or off or just leave it on auto or even customize if you want. All it basically does is just makes your eyes bigger, skin softer. So depending on the person, you may find this really useful, but I'm just gonna leave it off. Above there for taking photos, there is a timer you could select if you wanna do a countdown whenever you tap the shutter button. Then here you can also find additional frame settings if you want to change the ratio. The white balance settings also here as well as the grid for the rule of thirds. In here you can also find the selfie flip if you want your pictures to come out looking exactly like how they do on the screen without reversing the image. On the right side there actually are gesture controls which you can enable right here. There's two signals that you could do to get the camera's attention. The first one is simply by putting a peace sign. As soon as the camera detects that, it's immediately gonna start tracking. You can also put your palm in front of the camera like so, and then the three second timer will automatically start and we'll take that photo. And then right below that is the preview. 
so we could preview all the previously taken taken shots and such. And now, if we switch to video mode, you could use these gestures to quickly track yourself. To exit the tracking, you could simply tap on the little X corner right there, or tap the trigger button on the back of the gimbal. Now, if you're tracking a vehicle or some object that can't do hand gestures, disable that and just create a box around it and it'll automatically begin tracking them. Now, a nice little trick, if you disable gestures and you simply tap on the screen until you get this yellow box, when this pops up, just drag your finger up or down and this will lock the brightness. So the exposure levels doesn't automatically adjust if you go through like a dark area or a bright area, ruining the shot. This is how you lock it in place and also lock the focus. Now additional hidden gimbal settings, if you like to change between different modes of the gimbal, you can also press right here. And this is the quick summary. Follow mode will keep the gimbal steady, which means it will follow the flow of the camera from the direction you're pointing. And then tilt lock will lock one of the axes. FPV is like a drone point of view. It will follow the camera and rotate. To the position of the camera giving you this like air pilot drone footage effect spin shot is new for the ohm 4 which basically gives you this cool inception style visual effect that you control everything with the gimbal joystick and it's super stable as well now data zoom is only available on the ohm 4 and this is very similar to the dolly zoom effect i showed a trick on my previous DJI tips and tricks video on the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and how to manually do this but now there's a software on this gimbal that you could automatically do it simply tap on the style you're trying to do you could do zoom in or zoom out and just follow the instructions and just move towards the direction that the arrow is pointing and it's gonna give you this trippy looking zoom effect and that's basically it now in time lapse, there's a couple cool things you could do here too. Not only can you see the duration and stuff like that, but make sure you always change the resolution, bring it up a bit, because by default it's always usually always down. But a hidden feature that a lot of people miss is the path, which you could access right above here by tapping this duration screen. When you activate path, you have these blue plus icons on top. Simply move the gimbal, tap on the position you want it to slowly rotate to. So if we move it here and then move it there, let it do its time lapse with the duration that you like and the end result is this it gives you this cool motion time lapse additional goodies can also be found in the hyperlapse you can still change the resolution of it of course which i recommend doing even on the video recording but if you hit record it's gonna stay perfectly still and give you this hyper smooth time lapse now a cool trick that not a lot of people know about is if you actually use active track, like say your subject is a large building, if you walk towards it while hyperlapse is enabled, try to stay as smooth as possible and ninja walk your way towards the building and it'll give you this trippy looking time lapse effect of a large subject that you're tracking. This is great whenever you're making vacation clips and such. But besides that, that is basically it. Other useful information that there is to know is on top of here is your battery icons for not just your cell phone, but also your gimbal. So you can check the stats right there all the time. Then another thing that's worth mentioning is if you have this, this little tripod attached to it, this can also act, act like an extended handle. So you could capture a lot more in the frame if you're using the front facing camera. And now you are an expert when it comes to operating probably one of the best cell phone gimbals available in the market if you'd like to see more make sure to hit subscribe but not only that watch this video over here as i go through a bunch of awesome tips and tricks that you could do with the latest iphone and then that video over there that's just a video that youtube is suggesting specifically for you feel free to watch either or again thank you so much for watching take care stay safe and i'll catch you all in the next one see ya